uh, project. So my name is Alejandra Ayala, I do go by Alex, and I am the Senior Project Manager for this Carmel Marine Creek Road Reconstruction and Widen Project for the great city of Fort Worth. Uh, we do have Council Member Carlos Flores in, in the house, so if he would like to say uh, something, Council Member, we'd greatly appreciate it. Sure, can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I don't know, if, can't seem to get my, okay, there goes the video, all right. Well, good afternoon, or I should say good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here. Um, I'm very pleased that we're able to still reach out to folks, even though we are starting to get out of COVID from the uh, recovery end of things. But it's still important to keep people connected virtually is a great way to make that outreach. And I'm pleased to see that we have some good attendance here. I made some uh, outreach uh, via Facebook and also phone calls to get people involved with this because we want to ultimately hear what your input is on the front end instead of the tail end. It helps us, you know, uh, deliver a better product. So thank you very much, Alejandra. And uh, Jeffrey, and please continue. Thank you. Um, and right now is the best time for us to to present this to to the residents of the area, because we're only at about thirty percent design, and uh, that that's what I'm going to present to you tonight. Um, and with that, I'm going to get started. So I'm going to give you a little agenda for this project. I'm going to introduce the project team. I'm also going to let you know what my role is in the project. I'm going to give you a project map and an overview. Uh, the project scope. Uh, I'm also going to go over the project schedule and the budget and contact information. And at the end, uh, we will do questions. Also, if you do not wish to speak, you can also type in your questions in the chat box. And uh, what's going to happen is we'll compile all of these questions. And please provide your email, even if you're not asking a question, it'd be great if we, we can know who's out there, provide your email and your, your telephone number, and we will definitely respond to every question that is asked tonight. Um, yeah, that is I'm going to start it. So, like I mentioned, my name is Alejandra Ayala. I am a professional engineer with the city of oh, no, no, no. in CPW Capital Delivery. And I am the project manager for this for this uh, project. I also on this on this uh, presentation Web. is Raul Lopez, <laughs> our city program manager, and uh, he is on the line as well. Um, we also have Janice Ingram with Burns and McDonald, and Haley Smith with Burns and McDonald. They are both our our engineers on this project. We uh, we hired them to help us with the design of, of this roadway. So my role as project manager for the transportation department, I am the professional responsible for resource coordination, procuring and managing contracts and services for the delivery of a project whose limits and scope are predefined by the transportation planners. And also our consultant engineers, they're the professionals responsible for the design and coordination of the resources needed for the survey, right of way acquisition, utility relocations, permit submittals, bidding, and construction management, and ensuring the elements of the predefined scope are included in the final design. Our project limits are our Carmel Marine Creek from Boat Club Road on the west, all the way down to the Marine Creek Parkway roundabout. We are next to Boat Club Road, which, as any many of you know, is is that is a textile roadway. So we'll be doing coordination with them to make sure that our intersection improvements are are will you know coordinate well with with whatever signal they may have going on at the intersection. This project's about two miles, just a little bit over two miles in length. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the project scope. Uh, when we first started this design several years ago, we were everybody heard we were only going to construct a roundabouts at at Huffines and Bowen Roberts, and uh, 
That has changed. We are now doing a complete widening of the road between Boat Club Road and, and the roundabout at Marine Creek Parkway. We are going to put in a four lane divided roadway with a, with a future expansion of six lanes if, if, if needed. We're going to put in new traffic signals at Bowman Roberts Road and Huffines Boulevard. We're also going to put a new traffic signal at Crystal Lake near the elementary school. Um, we're also going to modify the traffic signal at Bow Club Road as well. This corridor will have street lights, will have sidewalks on, on each side of the road. And we're also constructing a new bridge adjacent to the existing bridge over Marine Creek, which will be able to widen out to six lanes in the future if we need it. And we're also going to be doing some modifications between the Marine Creek Bridge all the way over to Marine Creek Parkway at the roundabout. That section is actually going to be a five lane section. It's going to be asphalt. It is going to have a center two way left turn lane. It's also going to have street lights. And in this this section of the corridor will only have sidewalks on the north side where the current development is located. Um, as that uh, area across the street from that subdivision is developed in the future, the, the sidewalks will be added. So as many of you that drive this road, everybody knows it's, an, it's a two lane country road with side road ditches. And the way of, you know, Fort Worth is booming right now, it's, it's, it no longer has the capacity to carry the, the amount of traffic that, that is, is needed. So we need a, a wider road. And uh, this, these are just some of the pictures, some of the challenges that we have on this roadway. A lot of the drainage structures will be, will be widened, extended, and improved in order for us to be able to convey that, that runoff off of the new road. And currently there are no sidewalks or a center median on anywhere that the sidewalks come and go. This is another picture of uh, Carmel Marine Creek at Bowman's Roberts Road. We have it. We do have a really large drainage structure that runs diagonally across this intersection here that we'll have to make improvements to. And, you know, the developer for the Western Ridge subdivision that currently went up, they, they built their half of the road and is currently being used. And if, if you look at the picture on the right and you look at how you, you, you kind of get a glimpse of what the future widening of this roadway is going to look like with those nice white sidewalks on, on the end. Hello. The intersection at Hellfines, it currently does have a signal line, but that seems to be approved to accommodate the, the more widened section. And then, you know, the developer of the Marine Creek Ranch subdivision, they did, con they also constructed their half of the roadway. So what we're going to do is just, we're just going to continue uh, building the roadway north of, of what they have built. Here's some more pictures as we continue east toward Marine Creek. This is the section that is right past the Marine Creek Bridge. Um, this is an area where our, our um, the amount of right away that we have there is, is, is a little narrower. So through this area, we're get, we are going to add sidewalks, much needed sidewalks on that north side of the road to connect you know, pedestrian traffic to to the, the future trails that are going to go in at Marine Creek and uh, also to the school and the library just just east of, of this intersection. Once again, we just kind of have doing the structures that, that function well today, but eventually all this will be modified with the new roadway uh, expansion and we're going to get rid of these dead end sidewalks and provide a, a continuous trail for pedestrians. So now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're, we're proposing to build. Um, in this slide, you're going to see some, some orange and yellow and green lines. The, the orange lines represent the, the medians in the middle of the road. Uh, your yellow lines are the driving surface, the actual, where, you know, you're, you're going to drive your car the actual street. And then the green represent the, the actual sidewalks that are going to be constructed. 
And, and then here at Bow Club Road, you'll see a signal light because we are planning to put a new light there. And we are going to re be required to obtain some right away from, from the folks that, that are directly to the north of, of the corridor. So we're, we're co currently, you know, before we could do that, we need to set our alignment and make sure that we have everything that we need um, before we start asking, you know, for right away acquisition. And this is the section between Boat Club Road and we're going, we're going to be traveling east on these slides. And then we come on to the Bowman Roberts intersection um, where we're going to put in a new traffic light here as well. And here, um, currently, you know, we do the developer of Western Bridge did build this side of, of, of the, the north side of the road, but unfortunately, the, the, the aerials haven't caught up to the to the new construction. And we're going to continue eastward toward Bob Hanger, Huff Finds Boulevard, well, where we are going to construct a brand new signal. There's a, a future daycare coming in, in this, at this corner, and we've already um, addressed our right of way needs with them because we are going to require to build a dedicated right turn lane for the folks that are traveling westbound to go northbound onto Bob Hanger Road. And then, and also the, the developer for this Marine Creek Ranch development, they also built their half of the road. So we'll, what we'll be doing is just uh, continuing where they left off. So we'll continue eastbound as we approach Crystal Lake Drive uh, near Parkview Elementary, as well as the Northwest Branch Library. Um, we recently did, uh, we recently worked with our, our consultant, Burns and McDonald, and we did uh, Ask them to do an analysis to, to, to warrant a signal at this intersection. And as many of you know, uh, one is needed there because of the high pedestrian traffic. So we will be adding a signal at, at this intersection. And as we continue eastward, this is, uh, this is the beginning of the bridge right here as we go toward to Marine Creek Parkway Roundabout. And here's the other side of the bridge. And as, as I noted earlier, we are going to add a, a twin bridge next to that because we want to be able to, in the future, if this lane, if this roadway ever needs to become six lanes, we won't have to reconstruct a bridge. We'll just be able to modify the, the section through there to accommodate those six lanes so that the bridge will be constructed and designed and constructed to be to accommodate that the, the future expansion of this roadway. And as we go toward uh, the roundabout, the Marine, Marine Creek roundabout, um, Parkway roundabout, um, this is this area where we're next to the Cape Street and Seal Cove, that existing area, the, the existing subdivision there. We are going to have this section here is actually going to be five lanes. We are going to have a continuous uh, middle lane for people that want to make a left into the subdivision. And like I mentioned earlier, we're only going to construct sidewalks on the north side of the street as this area to the to the north to the south develops, then they'll be responsible for for constructing those sidewalks. And then we end up the, the project at the Marine Creek Parkway roundabout. Um, we are currently looking at ways uh, Burns and McDonald um, have have presented some ideas on how to make modifications. Um, at this roundabout to accommodate the amount of traffic that goes through there. You know, the city is aware of the issues with functionality of this roundabout during certain times of the day, and we want to address those issues and, and make improvements to where, you know, the are watching today, but I, I, I travel through this area, uh, you know, ma mainly on the weekends, and I, I see the challenges as well of trying to to make those movements sometimes because the traffic through there is not going to the design speed limit. So we're going to look into doing some modifications to be able to push cars through there in a much more um, a, a much better way. And I'm just going to give you a little brief uh, overview of what these typical sections are going to look like. Um, you know, the four lane divided roadway, as we 
we're going to build these these two added lanes to the outside. We're going to have a nice wide 38 foot median in the middle. And that's basically at the area for the futures of the future future lane widening if we need it. And then um, as we go closer toward uh, just east of, of Bowman Roberts Road, we we are we do have some right of way constraints through there, and that's why through there our 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 sidewalks are, are going to be reduced down to six feet wide through that through that through that area. This is just a little cross section of what it's going to look like through through the bridge. And how we plan to to construct it and, and then uh, leave that area, these 2 inner lanes uh, for future widening. And this is this, the 5 lane section through through the seal code. Um, for the 5 lane with the middle middle uh, turn lane. Between stone water bend trail and the marine creek parkway. So here's the project schedule and the budget. Um, we are Burns and McDonald recently completed 30% design, um, and that's why we're we're sharing this meeting with with the public uh, because this is the time for to get feedback from you all. And um, we plan to finish the plans by the end of the year, sometime in the winter of 2021, probably December, is when we will have 100% plans. Uh, Completed. We we do plan to to bid sometime in the spring of 2022, and start construction in the summer of 2022. And it's about a, a two year construction schedule. So we'll be we'll be uh, finishing it sometime in the summer of 2024. All these all these dates are, are are tentative. There's there's lots of things that can happen between today and uh, the end of the year. So. We'll just keep pushing forward, but I do want it to, to to make a note that the the design it, this project is being designed, but the actual construction is going to be contingent upon voter approval. Part of the Terry County, it, we're going to get funding from Terry County, and they're going to a bond election in November of 2021, and also the Fort Worth 2022 bond program that goes up before the voters in May of 2022, and that's why. Some of this construction starts. We don't have definite dates because this, like I said, this is this will be upon uh, your votes and, and and your word as to whether we're going to construct this this section of the street. Our project budget, just the construction costs, is, is about thirty million dollars to build this this uh, two mile long corridor. So that is the end of my presentation. Um, this is my contact information here. If you want to take a picture of it with, with your phone, that would be great. Um, I am the project manager and that's my phone number and my email address. And also we have our traffic engineer, city traffic engineer. His name is Raj Gupta. If you guys ever need to get a hold of him um, to, to you know, ask questions or, or concerns, this is his information. And I want to thank all of you for taking the time to to be with us this evening. This is a very important road for the area, and uh, we wanted to share what the city of Fort Worth is doing to help improve the the the, the everyday commute of the traveling public. And uh, with that, I am going to for questions if, if if anyone has any. Yes, I have a question, David Mendes, uh, Marine Creek Ranch HOA. Um, so let's start on the boat club end and work our way east uh, with questions. Uh, what's the deciding factor on who gets a turn and who doesn't for businesses through that area? I noticed that both Fox Fitness and the church don't have a dedicated turn in yet. The Sokol School does, and Fox Fitness and the church get way more traffic than the Sokol School. Dennis, would you like to to um, to address that? That D Dennis with Burns and McDonald, he's he is here. Yes, yeah. I'm here. I'm just trying to wave. So, I mean, the you'll notice that at the daycare we have a turn lane, right turn lane, dedicated. That's more driven by the overall traffic volume volume of the project corridor. 
So based on the traffic study we develop in the associated traffic volumes, there need to be turn lanes at the intersections primarily. And uh, our assessment didn't indicate at this point any need for a turn lane specifically for the Fox Fitness or the other location that you referenced. Um, I mean, I don't know how many cars you've seen go in and out of the fitness and the gymnastics. There is a huge skew there in the amount of traffic. Like and a very fact, large there's skew. A, there's you a large might want to look traffic. At, that, I'm sorry, go ahead, you, go ahead. You just might want to look at the some updated number first, uh, that don't have to do within the last year where there wouldn't have been any traffic to that area for a fitness center or a gymnastics. Um, it's a packed facility. Cars come constantly. I just think that a turn in there would be beneficial. Um, okay. especially if you're going to need some of their land, um, to expand this roadway, but we can, that was just a general question. Um, now moving on east to the intersection of Bowman Roberts. And Cromwell, uh, I noticed you have, um, some work done on both the north and south ends of Bowman. Um, is that going to be a lane expansion? Um, how's that going to work with the rest of Bowman Roberts being pretty much dilapidated and not being able to handle the, uh, uh, traffic through there. Uh, so they're going to run into what as far as an intersection goes. So the improvements that we're currently calling for are obviously the widening of Cromwell Marine Creek Road, uh, four lanes in each direction with the ability to widen out to six. But we recognize the need to also improve overall the lane widths and lanes at the intersection. So currently we're uh, considering or we'll add in some additional lanes on Bowman Roberts left turn for northbound and southbound traffic uh, that extends north and south of the intersection. Uh, you know, we have to... Well, well these ahead. improvements have bearing on, I don't know, Bowman Roberts being put on the master thoroughfare plan, which it's currently not, um, and is in desperate need of uh, repair and updating. And for that one, I may lean on um, Alex. That's, you know, that's beyond what I can really speak to. Yeah, if I may say something, this is Raul Lopez. I'm the uh, program manager that oversees the affairs, you know, like this project. So this project focuses on improvements of Roma Marine Creek at this time. Unfortunately, yes, we realize Roma Roberts is in need of improvements. It is not currently in the master repair plan. Master thoroughfare plan. So that, that's going to be a future project. Yeah, it is not a master repair plan. Uh, I'm just saying you're modifying a road that is not within plan. And I believe there is a city stipulation on that where it has to be on the master repair plan in order to be able to modify that road. I could be wrong, but that is coming from PPW, I believe, a couple of years ago. Modify to widen the road, it doesn't have to be on the master thoroughfare plan. It just needs to be it just needs to uh, to warrant the improvements based on a traffic study. But it doesn't have to be in the master thoroughfare plan. Um, so you're able to mo modify the road without a future plan. No, we 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 can absolutely yes. If we, if we don't have a plan, we can if the road is constricted. That's, that's all I need to know. That that it can be modified without a plan. Perfect. Uh, so and, moving on to the uh, let, Cromwell let me wait. Let me wait. Let me wait here. To clarify, we're not modifying Bowman Rovers at, at this point at this time because there, it is not uh, funded. Well, you're modifying these parts of the intersection that lead up to the intersection, so that would be modification. Right, absolutely. Yeah, but we have to oh, that's, that's all on the clarification on that, so I can make sure to, you know, follow up later when someone tells me that they cannot do this because it's not on the master thoroughfare plan, but obviously you can. Uh, so um, on the intersection of Huffines and Chrome Marine Creek um, would be my next question. Um, I'm actually extremely happy that you decided to not go with a traffic circle on this. It was supposed to be a traffic circle, I think, the whole time. And not going with the traffic circle is the way to go. The intersection here is probably the absolute perfect example of listening to people and modifying the design. That is a just an absolute great aspect that you realize that traffic circles aren't the full answer to everything. And you took that information and you, you know, went forward with it uh, this would not work in this situation. Um, now, further down, you mentioned that there was going to be actually five lines. There'd be a center turn in. 
is there any safety concern there with having that center turn lane? Notice that the rest of it doesn't have it. So that'd be my main question. In the future, Carmel Marine Creek is supposed to come down past this bridge, head south and connect to the roundabout at Longhorn. This is an interim solution until oh, that I'm sorry you said I'm sorry you said Cromwell Marine Creek was coming around on all the plans I've seen Longhorn is actually coming around to intersect with Cromwell Marine Creek. That that's correct. What you said is correct and what you're saying is correct as well. So Cromwell Marine this section of Cromwell Marine Creek that has a five lane divided sec on divided section is not in the master thoroughfare plan. So this is an interim improvement until Cromwell Marine Creek. Um, right after the bridge, east of the bridge, it's, it curves south and then back east to, to uh, connect directly to Longhorn. But that's okay. that's a future improvement that uh, we anticipate a developer to to deliver as opposed to the city because it goes through this through that undeveloped land just south of Cromwell Marine Creek. Okay, and then on the roundabout at Cromwell Marine Creek and Marine Creek Parkway, I'm very glad to hear that you recognize there's some issues there and that there is some type of work to fix that. Uh, it is a major problem. Uh, we do still also have people breaking in the middle of the roundabout to allow people to yield. Um, it has caused several wrecks there as well. Uh, the other final question I have is about the bond election. Uh, what's the contingency plan if the bond doesn't pass? Because there's, there's talk of neither bond passing uh, because of you know, so financial me, constraints of the people. Yeah, let, let me elaborate on that a little, a little further. So, the broad this Cromwell Marine Creek project is um, you know, partially funded um, by the 2018 bond program, but that that funding, the current funding, is not enough to construct the 30 million dollar project. So, even so the money have, they found in the bond because the actual project got cut. I'm sorry, I didn't get the first part. Um, money was found in the bond. Carlos can confirm this because the actual project was cut. Uh, the roads through here were cut. So they actually found money in the bond for other allocations. So this project isn't part of the 2018 bond specifically. This project is part of the 2018 bond. And it, it, as soon as it's put on there, it will forever remain on there. It was just not fully funded for the 2018 bond. So the $30 million project wasn't funded in the 2018 bond. The, the scope of the project was was not the scope that we're talking about today. So the project has evolved uh, precisely because we, we heard the community and you know the community is far more to, to improve the roads. And so we have what we have done is uh, Tarrant County put out a uh, call for project for the 2021 bond program, which goes to election in November, and we have applied for that. And uh, in addition to that, then because that's a 50-50 program, the county will provide 50% of the funding, but the mm -hmm. city has to provide the other 50%. That's a condition. So the city is providing the uh, the city is uh, going to recommend the project for the 2022 city bond program that goes to election in May 22. So both of those programs have to be approved by the voters. Now, um, project doesn't go, you know. They, they don't go to the, to the uh, voters individually. The whole packet goes to the voters. So if the entire bond package is passed, then the Rumble Marine Creek is approved and it receives funding. But it is all contingent on the bond passing. Correct, on the entire program. both And both uh, bonds, not just the one bond. So it has to, both bonds have to pass for this to occur. That's correct. Gotcha. All right, Thanks. thank you very much. Sure. And uh, uh, this is uh, Carl Soros coming in there. What what David is referring to is again, what monies we were able to get from the 2018 bond program. We requested then 31 million dollars, and we got 9 million approximately. And uh, we used some of that, uh, you know, again to apply towards the uh, design work. But what he's asking, uh, he had posed before, and uh, you know, it's it's a good question in the sense of well, what is our plan if if the bond doesn't pass? But it, it is a good distinction to make that the uh, the matching, the 50% matching that we're hoping uh, from Tarrant County to get that would augment our dollars 
uh, to see this full plan come through has to uh, be realized. I agree. And, you know, to be realistic, I still haven't seen a bond election that has been rejected in my lifetime. That doesn't mean it cannot happen. But like I said, you know, it's not like, it's like the voters are voting for Chrome or in Creek. They're voting for the entire package with all the other projects across the city. Um, and so, it, yes, so we not, all know how that works with bond packages and who gets what money. Right. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm speaking for the rest of the community that may not be aware of that. So, um, so that, that's that's the plan going forward. Um, I'm, I'm looking, I'm just going to run down to some of these questions. Some of these questions will have to, for example, Craig Backus, he, uh, mentioned something about the Bowman Roberts Boaz roundabout being completed before this starts. I'm not familiar with the schedule on, mm -hmm. on that particular roundabout. So I, I cannot answer your question right now, but I will look into it. I can actually okay. answer that question if I may. Yes. The project for that, uh, Bowman Roberts, uh, Boaz roundabout, it should be completed by the end of next year, I believe. Or the middle of next year. Sorry, I, I was on, a, on that same project meeting about a month and a half ago. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for answering that. Um, Katie Jacobs says the social entrance is permanently closed. Uh, that's good to know. Um, why not continue that last quarter mile to Old, Den Old Decatur? Um, you know, right now we're, we're just mainly focusing between boat club road and, and Marine Creek parkway. And so that is the scope of this project. Mm -hmm. Marine Creek parkway goes to boat club road. I'm confused. Um, will the traffic light be synchronized so that drivers won't hit red at each light? We will definitely look at, at progression through, through the corridor to make sure that 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 we're able to time those uh, accordingly. Um, so I will definitely put that on Dennis's list to make sure that we time the progression through through here um, so people can hit those green lights. Um, and Alex, if I may say something, it is important that we, that we understand as traffic signals are twofold. Um, we have to strike a balance between safety, pedestrian and vehicle safety, and then uh, vehicle progression. So, you know, while we strive to minimize vehicle delay, we also have to keep in mind pedestrians, especially when there's a school on, uh, on the south side, we, we need to be able to provide a, a, a time for the pedestrians to go across the street to go to the residences, what have you. Um, so we have to try to strike a balance between, between those two, safety and progression. Mm -hmm. um. Has there been any thoughts to making a formal U-turn section instead of a certain intersection? Um, I, I don't. I don't think on because of the nature of this corridor, that would that would be a a solution just because of the way the traffic patterns are existing. Um, and another one is we found these to be done today. I will I will look at the information that you provided on the chat. I will send it to our engineer for him for him to look at. Um, let's see. Uh, I can. Okay, so somebody did. Okay, it's Carlos. Alex, it seems like you're getting chat questions that I'm not getting. So when you um, when you send a chat, we'll please send it to everyone so that we can uh, take note of the questions and then answers. We would appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. We, we will definitely do that. And um, and uh, those are all the questions that we have. So if if the, if any of you ever have any uh, questions. Uh, uh, Yes, yeah, Alejandro, this is uh, Carlos Flores. Uh, uh, you know, I had a little audio uh, buffering issue just now, and I didn't hear all the questions that you were uh, seeing, but it was one from Katie Jacobs. Uh, a question about continuing on a quarter mile uh, 
on this project to meet up with uh, Decatur. Now, I think I remember reading that there was a separate project uh, in that area for Decatur. So just uh, notate that if, uh, if it's not included in that other project that I'm thinking about, then that might be a consideration. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any more questions? Well, you all have my my phone number and my email address. If feel free to contact me if you have any concerns or suggestions, we'd greatly appreciate it. And with that, we're gonna we're gonna call it a wrap. And um, I appreciate everyone's time for. To, to come on tonight and um, look what we have, what we are planning to in, improve uh, mobility through this area. So with that, I'm going to end the presentation and um, stay safe and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Looking forward to the next update. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Yeah.